Howdy tubers, welcome back to the Zach Life. I hope you can hear me, the wind's pretty bad. As I explained in the previous oil field video, this video and the next two will be about rebuilding the D18 American and taking it down, dumping the cases back that way, and setting it on a well, hooking it up. Uh, this will be part of the series in the playlist, Oil Field 101. It's kind of everything I think you need to know uh, to make a living in the Pope Oil Field. So this is not the one we're working on. This one just came out of the shop, uh, but it's one exactly like this. Anyway, I haven't actually touched this thing. I had one of the guys that worked for me. He pulled the beam off of it, pulled the saddle bearing. This this bearing is what goes up there the beam pivots on. Uh, he pulled the arms. Uh, this is the tail bearing. This goes between the arms and the beam. Uh, he disassembled all this, did some welding on it, pushed in the shop, and this is my first, the first time I've messed with it, if you would. All right, so the first thing that we got to pull out of here is the wrist pins. Now these wrist pins are spherical roller bearings you'll see in a minute. Uh, they'll do this when they're rebuilt and new, but they shouldn't have any in and out movement. Uh, that's that is how you determine if they wore out. Now the bore in these arms is tapered, and this wrist pin is cut with the same taper. So when you knock these in with a nut on them, uh, there's, they normally had nuts. Nuts are already pulled off. Uh, they're effectively pressed in, if you would. They're tight uh, inside this bore. The typical way you get these out is just to smack them with a sledgehammer. Of course, by doing this, you'll ruin the threads, but this is gonna be in a machine shop anyway, uh, so it's usually not that big a deal to fix. Next thing, I'm going to buzz all the bolts out of the high speed and intermediate caps. Now these caps should come off real easy or slide out I should say. Yep, just like that. Okay, so here's a high speed gear. I want you to look at this. If you'll notice the teeth are sharp, uh, they, come to a, they come to a point at the top. If you'll start looking, there's actually a couple of teeth here. I don't know how good you can see this where the tooth is chipped. Uh, this is absolutely gone. This is right on the ragged edge of, of tearing up. If this gear tears up, it'll tear up this gear here. Now. I should have checked this before I pulled these bolts out, but these bearings in this intermediate actually feel really good. So welcome back. It's about a week later. I got all the parts in. You missed a small segment here. I forgot to pull these main seals uh, in the video and I had to do it the next day. I didn't want to get the camera. But anyway, I got both those pulled. A lot of times how I do this, this is real easy, is just to take a uh, couple of self-tapping screws and run in here. You usually pull a few out and then just take a claw hammer and hook under the screw and pull it like a nail. I don't think I mentioned this, but it's supposed to have an oil scraper like this one over here that scrapes oil off the bull gear. That's what oils these two bearings. These two bearings are not getting oiled. Uh, it's probably in the bottom down there. If not, we can make one. And then I'm gonna pull both these oiling trays out uh, to clean them. All right, there's just a single bolt in these. This is part of the of the oil scraper. We'll probably have to make one. So here is the new high speed gear I got. If this isn't and doesn't show the awesomeness of American manufacturing, and I don't mean the American brand we're working on, but like America, uh, I don't know what does. I called the the shop that I buy stuff like this from, and I said, "Hey, I need a high speed gear for a 18 American." You got to remember this thing was what was it built in '57. He says, okay. He goes, is it a long shaft or short shaft? I said, what do you mean? He said, does the shaft come out both sides of the gearbox or is one side blind? And I said, well, it's one side is blind. He goes, okay, it's $530. I'll have it day after tomorrow. <laughs> they built these for 70 years and they're all exactly the same uh, because they were, they were designed well to begin with and there was no reason to change them and they didn't change them just to change them. So anyway, there's our gear. I believe I hadn't opened these. I believe these are the correct bearings. 
Okay, so these are press fit, and to put these on, I'm going to heat these things. I actually may not. You know what? I think I'm just gonna drive this one on there. Save us from having to heat it. That's not what that's for, but I think it's just made to be. That went on so easy. Um, I usually, let's go ahead and warm this up. When you warm these up, uh, they'll expand, and you should be able just to drop it on there. Um, these are small. I'm scared of them. I don't want to get them too hot. About 350 degrees, about as hot as you want to get them. You can put them in the oven, but nobody's going to do that. Let's just get a torch on it here. And it did not go. That's not the uh, kosher way to do that. But it's on there and it is not being. All right, next is the bearing housing. You didn't see me pull this apart. It's too simple to show. Uh, but anyway, we're going to put the bearing back in it. These are usually... <clears throat> these are usually very... They're not very tight. This one's actually tighter than normal. All right, hang on. You can drive on these bearing races, but if you get stupid with them, they will, they will crack, they will break. Uh, but generally, you don't have to worry about like knocking a dent in them. Yep, that's it. And there's a snap ring that goes in there. Somehow I didn't get that on video. So as I said, obviously these are cylindrical rollers. They, they, you know, they're a two-piece bearing or disassemblable. Is that a word, bearing? But what you've got to do. And I've got the camera in the wrong spot, and I'm not going to move it. But you've got to stick this in and engage it into the gear before you can slide this in. Uh, if you try to start this and slide it all in together, uh, you won't be able to work the gear coming around each other. Just like that. I'm going to lubricate this shaft before... We put this one on because it's the one with a seal and we don't want the seal to start dry. Okay, so the next is the main seal here. Uh, we want to clean this up as good as possible. Even, I mean, it doesn't have to be surgically clean, but it needs to be pretty clean. Oftentimes, there's kind of a, a ridge of crap here, dirt and grease. You want to be sure and get that off so that you don't damage the new seal when you go over that. All right, that feels pretty good. It's not, it's not perfectly clean, but there's nothing to, uh, to hurt the seal when we put it back in there. So yeah, I don't know if you can see, probably not. Uh, it'll be hard to show, but the seal has cut a ring. The old seal has cut a ring in the shaft. Uh, you can put wear sleeves over these, but what's easier to do uh, is when I ordered these seals, I ordered them by generic size, five by three, instead of, or something like that, instead of the old number. And the reason is, is you'll get a thinner seal. The old seals are really thick. And when you put this new seal in, the actual spot in the shaft that the rubber will ride will be a little bit farther out because the seal's thinner and you'll get a new a new surface for the seal to ride on. Now again, I'm gonna take just a very small amount of silicone and give just a little bit around the outside of this seal just for that little bit extra protection for uh, against the leak around between the seal and the housing. Now right, you need your big seal driver again. If you're careful, you can get this done, but it's, it's 
it's a little bit iffy to get it started. It looks like we got it. So the next thing I'm going to do, I should have pointed out earlier, looking at this, you can tell it's plugged up. These oil rails have supposed to have several holes in them and it's sitting full. So you know that that side wasn't oiling either, actually. But I'm going to go clean these out in the parts washer. I'll be right back. Okay, here's what they're supposed to look like. They've got three holes for the main bearing, uh, the intermediate bearing. I guess actually that's a high-speed intermediate in the, in, the, in the bull gear bearings. And these drip in there. I'll show you in a minute. There's probably quite a few of y'all picked up on the fact I hadn't drained the oil out of this thing. And I'm not necessarily arguing that this is a good idea, but in my experience, these things, if you change the oil and had this thing completely clean, it would look just like this in a year. And I don't change the oil in these things every year. In fact, I don't ever change the oil in them. They'll go, you know, their whole life and never actually be drained. They're added to periodically, you know, but anyway, I'm not gonna change the oil in it. We fished around in the bottom with a magnet. I've got some magnets I'll have to go get. Uh, I usually throw a couple of magnets in the bottom that'll collect metal. And I think throwing a couple of magnets in the bottom of these things probably is much better than actually changing the oil in them. Um, of course, probably both would be best. But what I am going to do is it seems like the dirt often collects in the top, not in the bottom. And I don't know why that is. I think probably it's because of the, uh, the bull gear churning up everything in the bottom. Um, is I'm going to wipe as much of this sludge and crap out of here as possible is easily accessible before I put the oiling trays back in. Now, you'll see uh, these these holes in the casting here. If you remember, the hole in this bearing is is just out of sight. It's it goes you know the oil travels right through here and drips down in the bearing, and this is where these oiling trays drip is into this little slot, and then it will run back and drip onto the actual roller bearing. Uh, these little deals that scrape on the gear, I think you probably figured out how this works when I took it apart. But uh, anyway, it dumps oil in here. I'll show you when it's running and it drips out these, these different holes. Alright, so I got to thinking, I have got these things, these, these particular D18s laying around everywhere. And instead of trying to rig up a piece of wire... Which I've done, but after I thought about it, I'm pretty sure that it was on the short side, not this side. Uh, I just ran out and robbed one real quick. This will be a better deal. I think that this one is a newer design. You'll notice this one does not have side rails. And, uh, and this one does. I bet that's a later model. Or maybe older. You never know. It might be, it might be older and better. All right, so this motor is wired for 483 phase. And here at home, the only thing I've got is 240 single phase. So let's see if we can jack around here and actually make this thing try to run. 
by hooking 240 single phase up to this, it's not going to start, but if I can get it up to speed, it should run. Interestingly, some of y'all may know this, some of you might not. If you spin it the other way, it'll run the other way. system works. Uh, you've got the little, uh, little hole in the oil and trays dripping down in that hole in the bearing and it's also running back over the edge towards you and getting down in the bearing. You can see the bearing is running completely immersed in oil. Uh, the same with this. The main bearing is a little bit harder to see but you can see the stream running down there and then it's sitting just inside a lip and inside that lip at the very bottom it's kind of hard to see at the very bottom of that of that hole that's cut in the box uh, it runs back to the rollers of the main bearings these have the best main bearing oiling system of any of the gearboxes a lot of the gearboxes simply don't have one and it is it just relies on oil sort of running down the gear down the shaft into the bearing which works reasonably well uh, but this is definitely superior uh, the gearbox noise you're hearing is the new gear. After this runs for six months or so, uh, that gear will wear together. It will wear and mate uh, with the uh, with the high speed gear there, and uh, and the noise will go away. So I'm going to leave this in the shop running. I got to run back out the lease. We'll come back here in a few hours. I might let it run all night and make sure we don't have any leaks. Well, everything here is looking good to me. I always think it's cool how the shutter speed affects the way you see something like that. It looks like it's just barely turning. Anyway, no, same thing leaking. Which is what we expected, but you know, nonetheless. So everything looks good. I let this run a little while, no leaks. The next thing I'm gonna do is put the crank arms back on it. This should be pretty straightforward. If it'll start on there, we'll just get after it with a hammer. Like so, I'll tighten the bolt up later. So I guess that's about it. The gear noise will quieten down after a little while. It's not the bearings, that's just the, the new gears, how they aren't worn together. Um, the next video is gonna be all about the bearings. I think I probably already said. Uh, we'll rebuild the wrist pins, uh, the south bearing, the tail bearing. It'll be more of a machine shop video. Uh, more interesting that kind of stuff you you check it out next week and then the last video is we're going to haul it out there and set it anyway i guess that's it uh appreciate you watching like share subscribe and uh catch you on the next one